Hello, everyone. Hi, Jim. Hi, How I'm are fine. you? <laughs> Good, thanks. Okay, so here we are with Jim Yang today, and we are going to be talking about children learning to read early on, and we're going to be discussing uh, phonics versus whole language. And with us, we have an expert at the matter, Jim Yang. He's a phonics teacher, and he has taught countless children to read with his phonics program, and including all of his children. All of his children learn to read before the age of three. That is truly remarkable. Um, his uh, older daughter, Rain, correct me if I'm wrong, She, when she was five years old, she was reading at a seventh grade level, and yeah, his yeah. son... Uh, Ethan was, uh, when he was three years old and nine months, was reading at a third grade level. And his youngest one now is learning how to read. She's, uh, learning, uh, she's, she could already blend multiple sounds. She's gonna catch up to her siblings soon, right? Yeah, and she, she's, she just turned two this month, actually. Oh, yeah? Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. She's, she's probably, still young. Probably in a few months, you'll probably start seeing some new videos that I upload showing her reading. That's great. That is truly remarkable, the work that you have done, teaching children phonics and teaching your own children. And um, so can you tell us how you got involved in this and why you decided to teach your own children at home instead of uh, just letting them learn at public school like most people do? Uh, yeah, sure. It's At, at the beginning, it, it really, I, I was just more, I was like any other parent. It wasn't more about, it wasn't really about just teaching them how to read, but just Finding ways to really stimulate intellectual develop, develop, development, and I and I always thought, okay, reading is probably one of the better ways to get kids to, it, you know, it's going to really help their brain development in the in the in early years. And then so we started looking, and then we saw these. Uh, well, you know, everybody sees the infomercial about these uh, baby reading programs, and where they flash a word on the screen, and they, and then you get to hear a kid's voice saying saying the word, but. It's after you know trying some of these. It's it's you you realize is that the my 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 oldest. We started with Rain when she was about when she was a little over one. Uh, you you start realize that she, they're not really learning to read, but they're just they the 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 memorize the shapes. Yes. It, it's not really like if I if I give her a new word, she wouldn't know what to do with it because they they haven't acquired the strategy of what to do when they see something different. So. So that kind of brought me on a whole new journey into looking what actually works uh, in terms of uh, teaching kids to read. And, and at that time, I mean, for me, is I I had no idea if, if it was even possible to teach a little two-year-old to read. So at, at that time, it was a lot of trial and error. And uh, and and but yeah, we, I, I I I looked at a lot of studies, and one of the most uh, revealing one for me was the one from uh, the National Reading Panel. Where they looked at, I think, a little over 1,960 studies that that that, that was that was that was related to phonics and phonemic awareness. And what what I got most out of that study was that they stated that children who learn through uh, the phonemic awareness plus plus a combination of phonics approach, they become better readers and they become better spellers compared to any other method. Wow, so, that's pretty really amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's really what set me on this path of looking at a combination of teaching uh, through synthetic phonics and through developing phonemic awareness with younger children. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of benefits starting early on, and it definitely really stimulates the child to become smarter and, and excel in all subject areas. That's definitely one of the benefits in, in teaching children to, to read before they get to school and not letting, uh, giving that task to the, to the public school teachers. Yeah, no, for sure. It, it, it really boosts your self-confidence. It's, it's what, what I find is with all that, I, I, I typically work with uh, two types of children. I guess parents have two types of children. Either either proactive parents or they're reactive parents. Okay. So if they're proactive parents, their kids, they bring the kids to me when they're usually around three to five years old, whether they like preschool, kindergarten. And the reactive parents, they're the parents that sort of have a bread of talk with the teacher. Where they find out okay, your child is not reading at grade level, and you really have to do something about it, or they're either going to get left behind, or they're not going to be able to catch up at all. So those are the reactive parents, and they have to do something. Okay. So, uh, sorry, what was the original topic again? I'm I'm kind of getting off on tangent. No, too. no, that's 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 <laughs> fine. So, um, can you share some of the things that you did um, early on with your children um, when you first started teaching them? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, with Ring, it was really really difficult at first because. 
uh, like like I said before, you, you you really didn't know it was going to work or not, because to teach a two year old, you know, it's you, you would think it's a little kind of little little difficult if, if it's, to see if it's whether it's possible or not, and and it it really it was really difficult at first because we couldn't get her to blend. That was the biggest stumbling block. It's for, for about two weeks. Like we we, would, we taught her some simple sounds. Right? Like we started with A B C and then we went on to the letter T. So we teach her the letters. We teach her to recognize the letter shape, and we teach her the proper sound of those letters. But when it came to blending some simple words, you know, we had C A T. At she would she would say the sounds like at, and then she'd say at, but then she wouldn't know what she said because she couldn't blend it together. And that was a huge stumbling block for us. For the first week, because and it really it really brought a lot a lot of doubt in, in my mind, because because I'm thinking okay she's she knows what she's doing she can recognize the shapes no problem she can say the sounds and she can do the chalk and the smooth blend but she was not able to really connect it all together and hear what she was saying but then something after about two two and a half weeks something just clicked in her in her head in her mind and they were like oh wow she she got it. And then it, after that, it was kind of then it was a lot smoother sailing after that point. That's great. Yeah, I think that's a that's a uh, a concern that a lot of parents have. They they start teaching them to read. They um, they learn the sounds, but it it kind of doesn't really click right away for them to do the blends. Um, did you teach them the the alphabet sounds first, or the alphabet just the alphabet letter names? Uh, we teach both. Both. I actually, yeah, for, for this is the matter that I actually did quite a bit of research on to see whether it was more beneficial just to teach letter names, letter sounds, both, or teach only sounds only. But um, a lot of research shows that if you teach the letter names with the sounds, the names actually give you give some of the hints and cues to the sound of the letters, where it helps the children to remember them better. So so what I did, I teach them both letter name and sounds. So I would say, okay, this is letter A. Letter A says the A ah sound, or letter B and letter B makes the M sound. You know? So, so we, we teach both letter A and sound. But if 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 I get a lot of questions about this, if a parent asks me if I were only to teach one, what would I teach? I would teach definitely the sound. The and sound, the yes, definitely. Because you do not need to know the letter names to be able to read, but you definitely have to know the letter sounds to be able to read. With with my second child, Ethan. We weren't so strict about learning the letter names. So even after he was able to read after three, he he wasn't too he was a little bit iffy on a lot of the letter names. But we weren't we didn't really mind that much because it's not all the necessary that you actually know the letter names to be able to read. Yeah. And um a controversial topic that always comes up is the phonics versus the whole language. Um in terms of when when teaching reading what 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 um which course to take, whether, whether teaching phonics or whole language reading. And, and I've seen a lot of programs out there. I mean, um, a lot of people teaching their children at home sight reading. Um, a program that I, I heard about was the, Your Baby Can Read, and you can see videos of, like, one-year-old uh, reading, quote-unquote. And um, also in, in public schools, they're starting – well, they, they've been doing this. They, they teach uh, the sight words right away in kindergarten. Um, can you tell us what you think about like the phonics versus whole language? Um, what what recommendations do you give parents in terms of of teaching children uh, sight words? Okay, uh, sure. It, when when you, when you talk to anybody like about reading, it's either it's always either phonics or whole words or or sight words. Okay, you never ever hear anybody or rarely talk about phonemic awareness. But if anybody that talks to me, I will tell them the first thing that you have to teach a child to read properly is you have to teach them to hear. Okay? So it's not just phonics and sight words, but it's phonics plus phonemic awareness. It's a combination of the two where you combine them that allows you to get the best results and to teach even just little two, three year old kids to read. Now, with the topic of phonics versus sight words, this is really a loaded topic. And it's something that I've written about a lot on my websites. Uh, with with sight words, I do not teach sight words until probably about halfway or about a third way through stage one of my reading program. And the first sight word that we teach is the. Okay. With if you ask anybody how, what a sight word is, most of them will give you the same definition. Whereas um, it's a word that you see all the time, 
it's a word with it's a high frequency word and you just have to know it by sight. But if you ask me what a sight word is, I have a very, very narrow definition of sight words. And I consider words that only words that you cannot decode easily, where words they do not conform to the regular rules of decoding, those only those words are considered sight words. So for example, you have the, that's definitely a sight word because you can't say eh. It's not eh. Yes. Or who, you know, W H O, you can't really sound that out. No. So it's it's those types of words that I consider sight words. And anything else that you can decode easily is not a sight word because you don't have to know it sight by sight. I mean yes, you do have to know it by sight because otherwise your fluency is maybe not is not on the upper part. But in terms of figuring out what a word is is in terms of decoding strategies, those are not sight words because those words can be easily decoded. So, and another thing is, when you okay with um with with sight words, when you're teaching when you're teaching children to, when you start teaching children to read with sight words, what what's happening is a, a lot of kids they, they develop these visual pattern recognition these on on the sight words where they tend to look at just the word shapes. And they, they, they tend to not focus on, okay, why does a word sound the way it does? They, they lose that component of it. And then if you have similar words, similar shaped words, and you show it to them, a lot of times what's, what's you're going to notice is that they get these mixed words mixed up, they're going to replace some words, and then when they read sentences, they're going to kind of assume what they're yeah. reading that, that, that fits within the context of what they're reading, even though it is the wrong word, but they won't realize it. Because, okay, the shape is there. Yeah, it looks about right. And it fits with the sentence within the context of what I'm reading. Okay, that's about right. Okay, that's the that's word that it, then that's how, kind of how it works out. But, and what I, I even, even a lot of my students, when that they learn to read phonetically, when they get onto sentences, they tend to sometimes just kind of guess at words because they see it and it fits within you know, whatever they're reading. And then I stop them, I say, okay, stop, sound it out, what did that say? And then, kind of, and they sound it out, they say the word, and I ask them, okay, so is that the word that you read? And they say, no, and like, okay, there you go, you can figure it out, okay, there's, don't guess, right? So. That's definitely important. I, I think a lot of guessing starts happening um, when, when parents and teachers start teaching sight words early on, I think. So you do recommend teaching sight words, but not right at the beginning, right? Yeah. I would actually not recommend teaching sight words at the beginning because you don't want the children to get into the habit and of uh, of seeing words as as shapes, okay? Because English is an alphabetic language, right? With where probably I would say majority of the words you can decode it easily with a with a small amount of words where it, it doesn't quite conform to the standard decoding rules, then okay, then you have to know of sight. Whereas if you try to teach a child Memorizing, okay, there's these sight words list, like the Dolch 200 sight words list, and then there's another. Yeah, the Dolch uh, list, yes. Yeah, there's another Fry's a thousand, thousand list of thousand sight words. Where if, if you broke those lists down, I would say probably 90, 90, 95% of those words are not sight words because you can decode them. You can decode them. If you try to get a child to memorize all of these words, you're going to get into difficulties because your memory capacity is only so much, right? So once you memorize a whole bunch of words, they you begin to get a lot of confused, you begin to you begin to make mistakes. And then so it, it's just can you imagine trying to get a child to memorize two hundred words? Whereas if you taught them through phonics and phonemic phonemic awareness, the only thing you have to teach them are the forty forty four sounds of English and then teach them how to work with those sounds. So it's on one hand, you either have to teach them to memorize hundreds of sight words, and on the other hand, you teach them to memorize and master the 40 plus phonics. Yeah. So it's what do you want to do? Do you want to have them memorize hundreds and thousands of words or shapes, or do you want to you know, just teach them 40 some sound? And that's so no. much easier. And at, at the same time, English is not an ideographic language like Chinese. So when you try to teach something as a picture, because you know in Chinese characters, they're, they're pictures, each character has meaning, they represent something. Whereas English, you have words that are made up of alphabetic letters, so it's an alphabetic language, right? So you don't want to be teaching 
someone can memorize all these shapes. No. I mean, you see the, the real strategy, the real mechanics behind what makes English sound the way it does, and what makes the words, that what makes the text that we see translate into the sounds, into the words that we hear. I think that's a great recommendation to to not teach all the sight words, like for example, the Dolce list as sight words, just only the ones that cannot be decoded. And um, because a lot of people, I think they, they have problems in terms of, they don't know how to teach the irregular words, like the ones that cannot be decoded. And so what, what would you recommend to them? Like, for example, the word who, do you teach it as a, as a sight word? Yes, or do you I, teach it? I definitely teach that as a sight word. What the, the way that I teach we, is I always focus on phonics component and the phonemic awareness component first. And as my students come across different sight words, then I just simply introduce it to them. I don't I don't make an effort, okay? I do I don't make an extra effort to take to make a list of sight words, okay, and tell them, okay, these this is a list of sight words. Okay, go home, memorize these. I don't do that. Um, with 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 this education system here, we live in I live in Vancouver, BC. Uh, my oldest, she's in grade one right now. She's going to be starting grade two in September. What they do in school here is that every week they give the students uh, in grade one five sight words, five words, I should say. They call it sight words. Five words to bring home, and they're expected to memorize those words, uh, what those words are. And Except they don't really give the student the tools on how to figure out why do those words sound the way they do. So when the students, when they're not taught with, phonics approach, and then they tend to look at the, the five words that they bring home, and they look at the shape of it, and then they just kind of sort of memorize the shape of it. Yes, I think that that it's really important. That's one of the reasons why it's so important for parents to to get involved in teaching their children to read at home, because a lot of children are graduating the system illiterate, and, and they... Reading is a crucial skill in society. I think if children don't know how to read, it's going to affect them in all in all areas in life. So I think it's definitely important for parents to take the task of teaching their children to read. And this is not something that takes hours a day, right? Like how many? How, how long did it take, for example, a day for you to teach your your child to read? Uh, generally, I spend around ten to fifteen minutes a day. Like we broke we broke it down because because. At the beginning, it was pretty obvious that I, there's no way I can get a little two-year-old to sit down with me for you know half an hour at a time. So what worked, what worked for us was that we get her to sit down for us three minutes. You know, it, it's very easy for them to get sit down with you for two, three, five minutes. And and so that that's that to teach a young child, you know, a two, three-year-old, that's the way to go about it. And uh, it it doesn't get too demanding and, tax, and taxing on them. And then, so you can work through it at a slow pace, and then you get through it. Fairly smoothly. Uh, let me let me give you an example of sight words. Okay, uh, can you can you see this? I have barn, burn, and born. Yes. My my writing is not that good. I okay? see. So if I, I put a block around it because that's the shape of the word, right? And what in capital letters? If you had a, a student that learned by sight and they look at those words, this, this is one of my favorite examples. They, you you look at these words and then you look at the shape. They look so similar, right? If they they can they'll easily get born confused with burn get confused with born. But if you have a phonetic reader that understands why bar sounds the way it does and why burn and born sounds the way they do, then they know okay well because barn has a three phonemes but are mm, because not because they have four letters not because they have the square rectangular shape but because of the phonemes that they hear in the words okay. That's but a great I, example. I just yeah. I mean, there's tons of these examples. Like if you just go through the Dolch or any sight word list and you look at some of the words like in, on, and, or three, there, uh, tree. These are these are e words that you can easily get confused when a child only learns them by sight but don't understand the minor nuances in that makes the word one word different from the other. Yes, yes, that's a great example because I think um, a lot of people that teach their children with uh, sight reading um, don't understand that their children are really just memorizing and like you said the the English language is is a, a phonetic language it's, it wasn't meant to be memorized um, so it definitely makes your life uh, your li the, pa the life of the teacher and the child easier just by teaching them um, the core phonics and yeah, no, definitely. It's, 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 it's okay if you want to teach sight words 
but you, you have to teach sight words along with a phonetics and a phonics approach to it. Otherwise, if a child does not ha, does not develop any basic understanding or develop any basic strategies in decoding, they're just gonna, the only thing that they have to work with is looking at the word shape, and that's it. Yeah, that's that's not a, a good approach. But definitely the combination of the, of, of the two is what makes a, a very strong reader. Definitely. Um, so what, what, what advice would you give to parents who are first starting off? Um, they have maybe some, a child at home that hasn't started school yet. Um, what are some things that they could do just to start off um, teaching reading? Okay. Um, with, depending on the ages of children you're talking about, like if we're talking about younger kids, if, say, we're talking about a one- or two-year-old toddler, what uh, the okay? We actually, regardless of the age of the child, the first thing you should always start is just start reading. Okay, I mean everybody tells me that it's you have to get them used to the concept of books to the concept of print. Definitely, uh, you, have have, you have to help them develop some print awareness. Know what know that the little squiggles that they see on papers on books are are what is what translates into the speech that they hear. Okay, and with the younger kids. I, I, if you ask me, I, I would never recommend starting with sight words. If you have to start, if you want to start early and you want to start with something, then definitely start with phonemic awareness, okay? Because with a lot of, if you talk to anybody, it's always phonics, 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 or sight words, sight words, sight words. You never hear about phonemic awareness. But when I talk to parents and I tell them, and they, and I tell them about this, about this stuff, I always tell them, learning to hear the sounds. When you make awareness, is half the battle for learning to read. This may seem counterintuitive because, okay, well, I'm reading, I'm not saying anything, so why do I have to hear something? Well, because you have to be able to hear it because the little squiggles that you see that's printed text translates into the sound. And the sound that you blend them together, that's the word that you get. That's why you have to hear. Because when you talk to anybody, you never really think about why does a word sound the way it does. You know, I mean, if we take the word, say, okay, word. Why does the word word sound like word? Not because it has the four letters, W-O-R-D, because it has three phonemes. It has W making the O sound, and it has the O-R making the OR sound, and making has, and it has the letter D making the D sound here, word. That's why it sounds like word. So when you teach this very, very simple concept to kids, or anyone, even adults, they, and they catch onto it really fast, it's... Once they catch on to this concept, then it's really, really easy to teach them to read. Okay, I've I've had I've had a lot of students. I I work with a lot of grade one, grade two kids where they're really behind, and usually after about three to five lessons, their parents come to me and like, oh my god, something just happened to me. You know, it's it's they just know they just something they just instinctively know how to handle a lot of the words that they see because it's 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 such a simple concept, but nobody ever. Focuses on it. It's always phonics, phonics, sight words, sight words. But yes, phonics is very important. But and phonics deals with you know teaching you letters, letter names, and blending. But when a child is unable to string those sounds together, then they're gonna have a real tough time yes. learning to decode. So you have to teach them to hear the individual sounds in your speech and how those sounds connect together to form the speech that they hear. And once you get beyond that initial hump of that, it becomes really, really easy to teach. So yeah, like like if you circle back to, our, to my kids, uh, with rain, it, like we had a really tough time. The first two weeks we couldn't get it to blend at all. It, you know, we had thought, okay, this is not working, what's going on. But with Ethan, what we did when he was about one and a half, we started some basic phonemic awareness training with him, where uh, where we just you know we recommit right, but. Instead of just being regular reading, you just pick some words and just blend it out. And whether he picks up on it or not, that's not important. The more exposure their ears get to the sound that you hear, the, the, the quicker they pick up on the different sounds. So if you, you know, you, the, the advice I would give parents, if you, you, you're just reading with your kids every night, just pick a word here and there. Like say, the big bad wolf, huff and puff. So you say the big bad wolf, huff and puff. Or just pick any word to blend it and segment it. Let your child hear the sounds in those words. That's going to really, really play a huge part when you actually start the phonics of component with it. 
Um, so with go, going back to Ethan, once we started teaching Jimmy at two and a half, it was, it was so smooth. It was so easy because he he was he was already he could have, he knew already he knew how to blend at that time. So it was so it was super easy, and there there wasn't that resistance to it because he like we we, we gave him the letters you know C A P or A C P or whatever combination of letters as long as he knows the sounds he knows what it says. So so with our third child we, we did the same thing. So now she's she's two years old. Uh, she can't quite speak yet. She can say some simple one or two syllable word you know. Uh, but we know she can blend because we what we do is we, we do it through actions where we try to figure out whether she knows what we're saying or not. So we, we, on a regular speech, we'll say, Joy, come over here, or come get your mm, L, or come give me a k it's. You know, she, she, like, as long as if she's doing all things, then okay, she's able to pick up on the sounds that we're saying, she knows what we're saying. So at, at, at first when we started, it's it was a little difficult because she wasn't she was like she's like huh like, <laughs> yeah, that's how we are. funny look because they're not used to hearing because mo- nobody's used to hearing when you stretch out a word or the individual sounds but once they get used to it more and more and more the easier it is for them to to pick up on this concept. Well, thank you so much. You have given us such great tips and great information, and you do have a phonics program as well. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your program and how um, our viewers yeah, can reach it? It's uh, my reading program is called uh, Children Learning Reading, uh, and you can go to our website childrenlearningreading.com. Uh, it's 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 a phonics program that I, I actually I should say it's a phonics synthetic phonics plus phonemic awareness combination. Uh, is a is a method that we teach to you, and it's. It's it's the program that I used to, that I used to teach my children to read, and it's the program that I used to teach all my students to read. Now the program has two stages, where uh, stage one has 28 lessons and stage two has 22 lessons. The lessons in stage one are fairly simple and straightforward, where we deal with the basic code of decoding. So basically, letter A makes the A sound, letter B makes the B sound. Uh, where we work more with simple alphabetic letters and blending. Uh, we actually get uh, into sentences fairly quickly. I think uh, usually with with my students, I usually get them into, sen- into reading sentences. Uh, usually around three weeks, so it, it's it's fairly quick going from not knowing how to read at all to reading sentences. Uh, with with stage two, it's a little more difficult, uh, where we deal with digraphs and uh, where we have uh, usually two letters and sometimes even more. Where but mostly two letters making one sound. For example, the letter A R making an R sound, or CH making a CH sound, and SH making a SH sound. So where we deal with those. And we also deal a little bit more with complex decoding, where you have multiple letters making one sound, or multiple sounds being represented by, by, uh, by the same spelling, where you have one letter or a combination of letters that makes multiple sounds. For example, if we go back to the CH again, it makes a CH sound. But he also makes that sound, and he could also make that sh sound as well. Okay, so in stage two, we deal with more with more with that, and usually, d- depending on the age of the child, uh, to complete both both stages, uh, if we're dealing with uh, maybe a two or three year, it would probably take somewhere around four to five, maybe up to around six months for a younger children. Now, if we're slightly older kids, say a four or five year old, we can probably get it done in around three and a half to four months. And with older students, uh, I can usually get them done in about three months. Oh wow! And I, in three months, uh, yeah. So I've I've worked with a lot of, especially the older grade two students, where they have a lot of exposure to text, to print, to reading, to sounds. I can get most of them done in about two months, two to two, so about eight to ten weeks, and they're done. So, and then usually by the time they finish, they're usually reading at grade level, and you give them enough time for. For, for everything to soak in, eventually they'll be reading at and above grade level. That's truly remarkable, Jim. Well, if any, any of you want to reach Jim, you can reach him at childrenlearningreading.com. You can also check out his YouTube channel. He has a lot of great videos of showing his children reading um, and how he taught his children to read. And they, they are really, really uh, nice videos, and you can get a lot of ideas from his um, YouTube page. Also on his website, you can see a lot of great articles that he has written about reading and phonics and a lot of research that he has done as well. 
Thank you so much, Jim, for having us, uh, for being with us today. And uh, we look forward to uh, uh, having a chat soon again. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for, thanks for uh, having me here. Okay. Until next time. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.